going to make a bold claim near the end of this 2023 of the year of the fire in yu gi -Mons. These hand traps are getting out of hand, ladies and gentlemen. I know I should probably go touch grass, but we're going to talk about it. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host feeling so much better with the most Avery LR32 here and destroyed the ever-living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button so we can climb even higher that 1300 ladder. This RSV bug was kicking my holes, if you know what I mean, as I get something on out my eye. I still have to make some jump cuts whenever I cough. But ladies and gentlemen, just to dive right on into it, hope you're having a fantastic day. I've been doing a lot of thinking near the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! here in 2023, moving into another year of Yu-Gi-Mons in 2024, and I'm getting really sick and tired of hand traps. And now I'm sure you're going to be saying, Avery, you just did well with Centurion and you were playing 15 hand traps. Yes. And I did that because I had to, because I wanted to actually stand a chance at winning. <laughs> and it's interesting to hear casual players talk about this. And like, this is in no way like trying to be mean to casual players, but like clearly this was a player that was casual and just doesn't know what they're talking about when it comes to hand traps. Um, but I was playing against this kid on EDO Pro a couple weeks ago. He's playing his Red Dragon Archfiend, Jack Atlas, Electric Boogaloo Special. It was garbage, but of course we struggle against it because Centurion can't beat Table 500 in Rogue decks. It's meant to beat meta, which is really hilarious when you think about it. Um, but I said, yeah, I'm playing 15 hand traps in this. I got 10th place at a regional. And the kid goes, oh, I don't really like that uh, ratio. I would play like two Nibirus and one evenly matched. Like I would cut back on the hand traps. And I'm like, those ratios are just garbage. Like you should never be doing that. Like you want to see those hand traps so you, you can win. And this kid goes, well, I just don't want to have to play so many cards where I'm quote unquote forced to play those to win. And I'm thinking, well, you have to play those if you actually want to fucking win the ball game. I'm sorry that you don't want to play competitively. And the thing is, is that after that conversation and the more it's melted in my brain, I'm like, to a degree, that casual kid had a point. Because if you're not playing, I would argue in this current format, like at least 12 hand traps, you're kind of doing it wrong, pimp. And that's why even though the meta is very diverse, there's still a degree of cards that you have to play in order for your deck to at least be somewhat viable in the metagame. I'll give you an example. This was like over a decade ago now. Jerome McHale wrote an article on the um, American... Uh, U.S. side of the TCG player event coverage page. If you've ever like read a feature match, not the live stream, but whenever you've like read a feature match on the event coverage page, it's on that website. Like you could still go and look at it. And it was like a four part article series talking about how they make the ban list and things like that. This is, I want to say it was like 2012, 2010, something like that. It was when glow up bulb and trap death shoot and all that got banned. And he talked about, granted, this was over a decade ago. This is the last time we've ever heard of it, but it's still something interesting to talk about even today that whenever they design a ban list, they look at cards that players feel like or they know they are forced to play because they are just that good. And for the example that Jerome McHale gave at the time was, you know, when you look at Cookie Cutter Chaos format, which would be like 2003, 2004, Chaos Emperor Dragon, Yada poking you in your butthole, things like that. Uh, there were certain cards that you had to play just because of the fact that they were that good. Cards like Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, Sinister Serpent, Delinquent Duo, um, Confiscation. You know, the, the names go on and on and on. Before you know it, <clears throat> you're playing 18 to 20 cards that you have to play that aren't part of your, what would now be in today's terms, your archetype or your in-engine. You know, those cards that back in the day when everything was cookie cutter chaos or just good stuff dot decks that would be like your non-engine. And that's still the same in Yu-Gi-Oh! today. This is why I say things like old school Yu-Gi-Oh! has evolved. It's still Yu-Gi-Oh! It's just been modernized. All those 20 plus cards, Graceful Charity, Podigree, whatever, that people played back in the early 2000s, they are still playing today. They've just evolved. Because now that non-engine has become hand traps, talents, thrust. Maybe you're teching in Feather Duster or one copy of Evenly Matched because you're playing one to two thrust. So it's the same concept. It's just power creep has made it evolve to these new cards. So now, like if you look at a Centurion deck, if you go look at my build, I know it sounds like I'm tooting my own horn with that. I'm really not trying to. It's just a good example. 
when you look at my Centurion build, any Centurion build, you can clearly tell what is the engine or the archetypal cards and what is the non-engine, aka the cards that you play because either they're just that good or because you have the space to play those cards. Now, should every deck be playing 12 to 15 hand traps? No, it just depends on how many non-engine slots you have in your deck. And when you look at Centurion, you play like maybe 20 in-engine cards, like in-archetypal cards that you have to play, whereas everything else is just non-engine. You can max out on the talents. You can play double desires. You can play 15 hand traps. There you go. There's your 40 card fucking deck. Fill up your extra deck with, you know, Crimson Dragon, a few other things that you have to play. Make your side deck whatever it is you need, Sugar Boo Bear, and off to the races you go. Good luck getting your invite. The issue that I have with that now is that there are so many hand traps that I feel like it's almost impossible for any archetype or deck that comes out and is not designed so goddamn perfectly where it can be competitive out of the gate that just a couple of hand traps just farts on it and it loses. And I would make that argument for Centurion, but the issue with Centurion where it's different is that you can either play it pure with 15 hand traps and hope that you hit a couple so that even if you summon, you know, one of your starters, True Day, a Primera, gets hand trapped, okay, whatever, I'm sitting on three hand traps, you're not going to be able to build a board anyway, and I'm going to come on back and whoop the ass on the next turn. Or they also have the Horus cards, and that can sort of supplement it to where, you know, if you go M Seti pitch a card and they go Ash, you're like, okay, cool, summon Primera, search, boom, 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 you have your plays, right? Not every deck's like that. Let's take the U Bell cards, for example. Again, and I've said this before myself, not every archetype, <clears throat> not every deck is created equally. And I still agree with that. You bell though, if you want you bell to be competitive, yes, there are cards right now post Phantom Nightmare even that you can play to make it be decent. I've gotten to where it can play 12 hand traps, but that's still not necessarily good. And if you stop the regenerating Simsara Lotus, which is like the Lone Fire Blossom, if you ash that impermit, whatever, the deck just loses. And so... These decks that maybe would have a chance if hand traps were pulled back don't have a chance because there's so many hand traps in the game. And I think a lot of people will agree with me on this because a lot of people right now in the game want D-Shifter fucking banned because D-Shifter is basically an auto-win card. I played it just to be able to auto-beat tier and purely and anything else that needed the graveyard because, yeah, I want my Premier and Shudei in the graveyard, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice to make the Legadia and then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then be able to whoop your ass just because I have a big 3,500 beat stick on the table and you can't play because I shifted you. And I don't think that this is out of the realm of possibility. Look at Cyframe Gear Gamma. Gamma went from three to one. Nobody plays it. Now, Gamma, I will admit, is an outlier because if you used it during your turn, that got you the Gamma and the Driver. That made an Excel Synchro. That went to a Baron. One Cyframe Gear Gamma became a Baron. And if the opponent's playing with a five-card hand because they're going second, they lost a card to the Gamma. You establish the Baron. Now, if they try and play another card, they've lost another card to the Baron. Oh, and if you opened up a Talents, you could rip a card out of their hand. Now they're playing with a two-card hand. They're drawing for turn into three. How are they going to beat you at that point, especially when you have an established board? It was ridiculous. And so when you look at all of the decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, the 20-plus meta decks th th that are in the room that you can play in this format because it's very diverse and that's a good thing, there are a lot of cards, I would argue, that you have to play in order to see any sort of room for success. Now, you might be playing a roguish deck or what I'm just going to be honest with you and call a table 500 deck because, you know, your boy, that's how we're honest. And you're playing fucking Cyber Dragon, Aromage, uh, Machinas, uh, the, you know, level 10, rank 10 trains, whatever, right? Uh, you might not have as much room for these non-engine cards, but that's because of the fact that your deck takes more engine to actually play than these other meta decks, Right? You know, not every deck's like Centurion where you have so much open space in your deck to play all these hand traps. And on top of that, these other decks that have to play a lot of engine cards lose to these hand traps because they just don't have the gas to play through it. You know, I, I feel, I don't think that every single hand trap should go to one. I think that's a bit too much because then you hit an issue where it's like, okay, well, if you open up the one of Ash, I just lose. Or the one of Imperm, I just lose. But I think that there definitely needs to be some reigning in of these hand traps because when you think about how many we have in the game, we have a shit ton. 
Shifter, Ogre, Cherries, Ash, Droll, Imperm, Gemini Imps, to a much lesser extent, but it is an old hand trap. Skullmeister, Imperm, Veiler. The list goes on. Like, yes, not all of these hand traps are played at the same time, but it's the fact that you have options by stealing DD Crows. I forgot to almost mention that. So do you see what I'm getting at here? It's absolutely ridiculous. I would argue right now, the main cards that you have to play in your deck to have any sense of trying to be good or having a chance to win, you have to play some number of talents and thrust. If you're a combo deck, you have to play call by. Uh, you have to play, I would argue at the bare minimum, nine hand traps, more like 12 to 15 to actually be able to stop the opponent from playing on your turn. You have to hope that you don't run any inconsistencies at that point, or you have to cut back on the non-engine. And if you have to cut back on any of that, then you might as well just pick a different deck to play because you're clearly playing too much engine in your deck that you don't stand a chance of going second. This is why I made that YouTube short about the Raid Raptor stuff. The Raid Raptor stuff, if you win the die roll every time and go first, you're, the opponent is just dying with no lube. Like They might as well just open up the pearly gates and say, come on in, because you're going to win. Like, it can play through a bunch of different hand traps. It doesn't care about Nib. It doesn't care about Droll. It doesn't care about Ash. Unless they have, like, double Imperm slash double Baylor, then, yeah, you're kind of crapping your pants at that point. But that's just Yu-Gi-Oh. Going second, you have no game plan. Uh, you, at most, can play 12 hand traps. If you don't see, the like, two of those 12, you're losing. It's just not even worth it at that point. You might as well just pick up a different deck and play. Cool for casual, not for competitive. It's going to be garbage. And... It, things like Raid Raptors can't keep up, I feel, because of all the hand traps that we have. So let's ban D Shifter. Let's, I would, I don't want to see Call By come up to higher than three, but let's do something about it, right? Like, let's have Cross Out, you know, still be at three, but let's hit Thrust and Talents down to like two or one or preferably be banned. Like, Let's hit these things to where other decks can compete, especially in a diverse meta. And not every deck is just three talents, 12 hand traps, one to two thrusts, call by, boom, there's your non-engine. Everybody's playing the same 20 plus cards with their archetypal cards. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Am I just off my rocker here? Is the uh, is the amoxicillin or augment and whatever the hell my doctor put me on just making my brain rot away? Guys, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.